Hello, good people of the world. Today we are dealing with two behemoths of battery backup, two paragons of power storage, two, you get the picture. Today we're talking the Jackery Explorer 1000 versus the brand new big boy on the block, the Jackery Explorer 1500. Now, before we get into it and talk through these two battery storage products, a couple pieces of business I wanna take care of. First off, as always, I wanna tell you when I receive a product for free or when there's a sponsorship arrangement. In this case, anything you see with a Jackery brand on it was provided for free by Jackery. Now, they don't attach any strings. I don't promise them I'm going to give them a favorable review. Uh, everything I say here is, is my opinion and from a perspective of would I spend my own money on these products but do want you to be aware of that. Second thing I wanna talk about is my perspective. So I'm a typical homeowner. I'm not a prepper. I'm not preparing for a, a zombie apocalypse and we're not gonna talk through how these devices will help you uh, prepare for some end of the world type scenario. I'm also not a cool overlander that's taking these things to the desert and doing some, uh, some van life action, although we do roll deep in hashtag minivan life. In the suburbs that would buy one of these units in case there's a power outage to keep our refrigerators, some of our devices running, uh, taking these on a few camping trips. And that's the perspective I'm going to, uh, to come at these from. Other thing I wanna talk through is these units go by a few different names. Some people call them power banks. Some people call them battery backups. Time to call me young ho, iceberg. Uh, Jackery calls these solar generators. And while that's technically accurate, you can connect them to a solar panel. They will indeed generate electricity from the sun. I think that's a bit of an unfortunate name. And the reason for that is, again, your average homeowner that's maybe considering one of these units, when they see generator, they think of a typical gas generator that runs off of the automotive gasoline, diesel, or, uh, or compressed natural gas. There's a few things about gas power generators that just aren't true of units like this. So your typical gas generator can create its maximum output. So these devices and gas generators will have a maximum wattage. In the case of the gas generator, it'll put out its maximum output as long as there's fuel in there. So you get a gas generator that's rated for a thousand watts. As long as you keep the tank full, you're gonna be getting a thousand watts. Now with these devices, you're going to get the max output for a fairly short time. Uh, for both of these, it's about an hour. Um, the branding kind of indicates the maximum output. In the case of the Explorer 1000, it's about 1000 watts. In the case of the Explorer 1500, it's 1490 or 70 something watts, but approximately 1500. But whereas my gas generator might be able to create its maximum output, say 1000 watts for five or six hours on a tank full of gas, both of these guys are only going to put out their maximum output for about an hour until your battery's dead. So, that might seem like a bit of a negative. The positive is a few things. Your gas power generator's a relatively complex machine. There's a gasoline powered motor there, there's an alternator, there's an inverter, there's several different systems that ultimately turn fuel into power. And those systems require maintenance. You know, think of your typical lawnmower, weed whacker type, uh, type product. You need to change the air filter, change the oil, change the spark plugs, and the fuel can get, uh, get stale after being in storage for a while. These products essentially require little to no maintenance. Uh, and the manual Jackery suggests plugging them in every six months or so, charge it up, make sure everything's working. That's, uh, that's a bit lighter than having to replace spark plugs, change air filters, drain oil, stabilize fuel, et cetera, et cetera. The other big benefit about units like this is every time there's a, a big uh, widespread power outage. You know, recently we went through the whole Texas snowstorm. I'm not in Texas, thankfully, but have several uh, friends and colleagues who are. And in some cases they lost power for, for several days or up to a week. And you'll always see a newspaper story or two about somebody that, uh, that passes away due to carbon monoxide poisoning. And even in a lot of cases, they've tried to do the right thing. You know, I, I read about one case where they had the gas generator outside their window. Uh, you know, it wasn't in the house, wasn't in the garage or anything like that, but the window was cracked to get some extension cords in. And through some freak occurrence of, uh, of nature, the winds blew in some carbon monoxide and a few people passed away due to that. You know, with these guys, you could have this unit sitting next to your bed, running a CPAP, running an electric blanket, doesn't produce any carbon monoxide, 
it's also essentially quiet. Uh, when you run it at max load, there's some fans that spin up, but it's nowhere near the noise of a gas generator. So if I've got one of these in my house, you know, I can be running it at two in the morning. It's not going to drive the neighbors crazy. Nobody's going to know I have a, a gas generator running and potentially come and want to uh, want to borrow or perhaps commandeer my uh, my power source. So with all that out of the way, let's get into these two units. And first things first, these are big devices. Uh, you know, I, I've had the Jackery 1000 for three or four months, and you know you can see it's uh, it's a good size unit, and it's uh, it's fairly heavy. I'll put the specs in, uh, but you know it's something I'm a I like to think of myself as a reasonably strong person. Uh, you know, typical six foot tall American male of average strength, and you know I can I can lift it and move it around, but it's not something I'd want to carry for uh, you know, for much more than a few tenths of a mile if I was moving around. Now, when you take the uh, the Jackery fifteen hundred, essentially everything's been uh, been turned to eleven. You know, the unit's bigger uh, in all dimensions. Um, just similar form factor has the handle on top, orange panels, has a little light on the side, which we'll talk more about. So, you know, it kind of looks like you took one of these guys and uh, you know, gave it a little, little bit of a, a strength training program where it just got bigger in all dimensions. And it's heavy. I mean, it's, uh, I don't know how, uh, how much my face indicates, but this is a, a bit of a strain to lift. Um, you know, I'll put the, the weights in the screen, but just from a felt perspective, I mean, this, uh, this unit is something that you would not want to, uh, to have to move very far. Um, and again, the way you get more power out of a device like this and more runtime is you put more batteries. In this case, the power rating is about 50% uh, more. So I assume there's, there's about 50% more batteries in here and 50% more weight. Now, you know, other uh, items of comparison, you can see that the outputs are essentially the same. So on the AC side, uh, which is kind of your typical wall plug, you've got three plugs here, you've got three plugs here as well. Uh, what's nice about the Jackery, those plugs are spaced so you can get a, a larger wall wart or a you know, big uh, big charging cable in there without having to worry too much about it bumping up next to each other. Uh, interestingly, on the Jackery 1500, they have uh, 20 amp AC outlets. Uh, these are kind of an industrial outlet. You can see there's that uh, this little um, plug off to the side. So if for whatever reason during a power failure you wanted to run a... Uh, a large industrial floor cleaner or something that required 20 amps of 120 volt electricity. You could do it with this guy. You don't have that feature over here. We also have a 12 volt DC output. Uh, this is your typical car adapter. In my day, we used to call it a cigarette lighter plug. Um, you know, they've relocated it on the Explore 1000. It was over with the rest of the DC outputs. On the 1500, it's moved up to the top. It has a separate on off switch, which is uh, is nice and it's a little bit out of the way so you can organize your cables a little bit more effectively. In terms of other similarities, both of these units have the tiny little flashlight on the end and we can turn that guy on here. Neither of these are life-changing. You know, you're not going to want to carry, especially this guy around and use him as a flashlight. Uh, where I have found these are these are kind of nice is if you have one of these up in your closet or you know out in the, the garage or something and there is a power outage, you can turn this on. It kind of serves as a path light when you're carrying it around by the handle and it will illuminate wherever you're going if you're in a dark house or you know maybe you have to go outside and go to a detached garage or something like that and pick the unit up. Now where things start to get a little different is on the input side. And let me turn these guys back around. And on our Explore 1000, we had two inputs. We had this, uh, this kind of circular jack, which as I understand is a 12 volt uh, DC input. There's also an Anderson power pole connector. I personally like Anderson power poles. You can get a little tool to assemble those yourself if you're handy. I've used them for things like, uh, like car chargers. Uh, when I used to ride motorcycles quite a bit, Anderson power pole was nice since it was easy to assemble and make your own connectors. With a little bit of a yank, they'll uh, they'll disconnect pretty easily. So something like this, where you might trip over a cable, it'll disconnect. And if you have solar panels, or if you have something that you want to connect to this device to charge it up, you can relatively easily make or get your own power pole connector and plug that in. So you can see the connectors look physically the same. And interestingly, when Jackery shipped me the 1500, they didn't include a power brick. So I took my 1000 power adapter 
plugged it into the wall. The connector fit right in here. Uh, didn't feel as solid. It, it felt like it was not as, uh, as well connected as it is to this unit. And the display turned on, but it wouldn't charge. And I was a bit concerned that there was a problem with this unit. I contacted Jackery. They were able to send me the chargers, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And again, connector looks physically the same. The new connector fits in here a little better, feels a little more solid when you connect it. And what's interesting and what's apparently changed is they've changed the input voltage on the Jackery 1500. That lets you charge up a little faster off of the wall, but it does require some adapters that we'll talk about in a minute. In terms of other differences between the units, the display on the 1500 is vastly improved. And I'll turn this guy on for you here. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for actual use of these devices, it does have a relatively aggressive timeout where it'll turn off. But in the Explore 1000, you got your battery level in a percentage. You got a little graph that kind of showed some, uh, some bars to indicate how full your battery was at a glance. And you've got an input voltage or excuse me, an input wattage and an output wattage. So you could kind of get an idea of if you were drawing more power than you could put in if you had this connected to solar panels. What was missing in my mind that was a key feature was runtime. You didn't get any estimate of how long your battery would last with the current load. You didn't have any kind of estimation of how long it would take to charge the battery up. And that's what's changed with the 1500 and what I think is a, a big feature. You, know, you look at the display, it's obviously color, it's fancy, it's got a little bit of a nicer screen, uh, battery percentage is prominently displayed on there. You've still got your input and output wattage, which is, uh, is highlighted nicely. And you'll see once we plug this guy in, it will tell you an estimation of how long it's going to take to charge. Similarly, it will provide an estimation of how long the battery is going to last when you have devices connected. To me, that's a huge upgrade. If I've got one of these things connected, I've got a couple or three cell phones, I'm in an emergency situation where I don't have any power, I wanna know how long this guy's gonna last. The displays obviously use different technologies. Uh, you know, this one's color, it's more like a, a, you know, a watch or, or TV display, it's kind of a, an active display in that it's backlit. This one over here has a backlight, which will automatically turn off after a few minutes, but it's more of a traditional LCD display. And you know, it's not as fancy, it doesn't look as nice, Little bit easier to read in the sun. I don't think that's a huge deal. Um, you know, you're not going to be checking these every 15 seconds and need to constantly stay updated when you're outside on a camping trip or something like that, but just something to be aware of. The other big differences are around the power adapters. So in both cases, Jackery gives you this relatively nice little neoprene case. It's kind of that, uh, that same material that wetsuits are made out of and things like that. You know, at first glance, they look about the same, but the Jackery 1500 case is a little bit bigger and you'll see why momentarily. So with my 1000, in terms of the accessories they give you out of the gate, they give you a power brick. Uh, in both cases, these are both made from the same company. Uh, in both cases, they're fairly nice power bricks. You know, the plastic's nice, the material's good, it's solid, it feels good. The cords are relatively robust. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a pretty decent sized power brick for the Jackery 1000. And it takes you know, a good day to charge up of AC. It's, they also supply a 12 volt charger. So you've got your uh, car outlet slash cigarette outlet if you're old school, and you've got this uh, Jackery input plug on the other side, it goes right into your DC input. So if you were driving and you had a fridge or you, know, you had a whole bunch of electronic devices you wanted to run, you could plug this into your car it'll charge while you're driving. And then when you turn the vehicle off, it'll run off of its internal battery. So it could essentially provide uh, kind of uninterrupted power to some devices in your vehicle. And that's what you get with the Jackery 1000. Now, when we go to the Jackery 1500, again, similar pouch, nice material, uh, you know, similar quality to the AC adapter, but you know, this guy is, is the big chunkus of the power brakes. Let's do a little side by side here. You can see much like the Jackery unit itself, uh, just larger in all dimensions, uh, height, width, vertical, um, heavier, and you know, just, uh, just a little bit bigger. It does have some nice little rubber feet on it that the Jackery 1000 power brick doesn't have. Um, you know, in terms of output, as I mentioned, it looks like that's changed. This guy has a 48 volt output. This guy has a 24 volt output. So they have changed the power input. Uh, what that does do for you as the consumer is it lets you charge the 1500 much faster. 
The other things you get with the Jackery 1500, you get a similar uh, automobile input. Um, you know, again, the, uh, the plugs look pretty similar on the input car side. Uh, the output plugs are a little different. And you know, on close examination, you can see that they're, they're a little bit different. So these are, are not interchangeable. If you happen to own another older Jackery and want to use some of your accessories with the newer Jackery, that would also be important if you wanted to order some of these online to make sure you order the one for the 1500. The final item you'll get in the box with the Jackery 1500 is this little adapter. And this guy essentially allows you to plug the old style Jackery devices into the new unit and have them work. I have no idea what kind of magic is inside. I assume there's some sort of uh, means to convert the voltages appropriately, but you know, I can snap my old style car, car adapter in there and I'm able to plug it in uh, into this new unit and get a good solid connection. Where this is particularly relevant is if you already have or are planning on purchasing Jackery's companion solar panels, which we'll talk about in a little bit. This will allow you to use those older panels with this newer device. At the time of this video, the kind of top end of the Jackery solar panel range is the Solar Saga uh, 100, which we'll be talking about. And that has the older plug and does require either this adapter, which comes with the unit, or they also make this adapter, which essentially has two inputs. So you can plug two panels in and then plug this guy into the, uh, the Jackery 1500. So I've got both these devices plugged in. Uh, you can see my 1000 has mostly a full charge. Uh, this guy is about 50% charged, so he's uh, he's taking kind of the full amount of juice from the power adapter. Right away, you'll notice a big difference if you can see those displays, if they haven't uh, turned off. Let's turn them on again so you can actually see that. And that's that the input on this display says about 150 watts, uh, which is what the power adapter is rated for. You know, give or take a little bit, it seems to kind of jump around the 140s or so. And then the Jackery 1500, again, we're kind of jumping around that 300 watt range. So nearly double the input power uh, that essentially approximately just shy of doubles the charging rate for this device. And the charging times, I'll put these on the screen, but despite the Jackery 1500 being a larger unit, larger capacity, it actually charges faster than the 1000. So again, if you're concerned about that scenario where you hear a, you know, a tornado is coming through or there's a storm coming and you maybe only have a couple or three hours to charge before the power might go out, that could be a factor in leaning towards the Jackery 1500. The other thing you'll notice, obviously with the 1500, I do get those time indicators. And in this case, the screen's telling me it's just shy of four hours before this unit gets charged up. Kind of a nice feature. I think it's particularly nice for battery drain. So when you've got these plugged into several devices, you can see how much runtime you have left. The big difference between these types of devices and a gasoline generator, as I mentioned in the beginning, is that you're only going to be able to generate your maximum power output for a short period of time. Now, where that's particularly relevant is any device that has a motor usually, or any device that generates a lot of heat is going to really run your battery down fast. So, you know, I could probably get hundreds of phone charges out of either of these units, frankly, but I might only get 40 minutes of running a space heater, uh, running a hot plate, um, you know, running something like a coffee maker where it's got a lot of heat that it has to generate. So I'm actually recording this review on Jackery Day, which is the day that Jackery is set to announce this new product. Hopefully you'll be able to see this review shortly thereafter and get some thoughts on whether this is a, a worthwhile upgrade or this is something you'd wanna consider versus the, the kind of tried and true Jackery 1000 over here. So let's get right to the chase. Which one of these should you buy? And I think the first decision you have to go through, as mentioned, is do I want a gas generator or do I want one of these solar generators slash power banks slash battery backup slash whatever the heck you want to call them. And do your own evaluation. For me, I definitely lean towards the power bank side of the house. Uh, for me, we use these car camping. You know, it's something I want to be able to keep around the house and use in case of emergency. I don't want to be out in the wilderness with a generator running all night, uh, creating that noise and you know, sort of disturbing the environment that I've, I've come out to enjoy and that, that peace and quiet that, uh, that hopefully we, we go into nature to enjoy with, with running a gas generator. 
um, you know, do you go with the 1000, the 1500? And I don't have pricing yet in the 1500 since it's literally hours before the release. Uh, they haven't published that yet, but you know, let's assume based on some of their other units pricing that this guy's going to be, you know, 15 to 50% more. So that would put it probably in a 1200 to $1,500 range. So not a inexpensive uh, increase in price. You know, you do get 50% more power. Uh, that's theoretically 50% more endurance for your devices, you know, plus or minus a little bit based on all the, the nuances of electricity. The one factor that I do think is important, you know, assuming money is no object and would probably be my biggest decision criteria if I was thinking about these two is the weight. You know, if you look at the 1000, this is not a light device. Not awful, but it's certainly not something I'd want to carry more than maybe a mile. Um, you know, it's not something you're just going to throw in a backpack and, and kind of take on a, a trip on an ad hoc basis. You know, this is something where it's, it's got some weight. It's going to take some room in your car. You throw a couple solar panels in there. You know, it's, uh, it's kind of a commitment and you take that same set of, uh, of weight related challenges and you're essentially multiplying them by 1.5 for the Jackery 1500. I mean, this guy's a beast. I'm trying not to show too much strain in my face, but uh, you know, it's 30 plus pounds. It's, uh, it's probably about 50% bigger in all dimensions. And you know, that's not, uh, not Jackery's lack of engineering or anything like that. It's just simple physics. If you're gonna put 50% more energy in one of these devices, you're gonna need 50% more battery capacity and it's probably gonna weigh about 50% more. So, you know, I would, I would not uh, just look at these on price. I would look at them with weight as a, a consideration factor as well. And, you know, particularly if you're gonna be doing a lot of camping, if you're, you know, you see yourself a weekend or a couple weekends every month in the summer, throwing one of these in the back of your vehicle, you know, taking it out car camping, uh, maybe use it to, to charge up your devices, um, you know, power a, a cooler or something like that. This will definitely get you through the weekend and maybe be a little easier to, to transport around and to carry around to your campsite. You know, it's basically something where we can keep our phones charged for emergency use, uh, we can keep radios charged, can run the fridge for a little bit, could run a 12 volt fridge to, uh, to kind of keep any expensive foods or meats or anything like that, or a uh, emergency six pack of uh, beer available. Um, so this, this isn't bad for that type of need. Yeah, you know, this guy would think more about maybe it's like a, a home backup type scenario. You've got 50% more power, 50% more runtime. Interestingly, it charges at about the same rate as the 1000. So if you're subject to frequent storms, you know, if you're in an area where you kind of look at the weather at, uh, at 9 a.m. when you wake up and say, hey, there's a storm coming. I've only got five, six hours to prepare. Plug both these guys in and in about the same amount of time, you've got 50% more energy in the Jackery 1500, which could be an advantage depending on your situation. Obviously you've got 50% more runtime as well. Uh, if you've got a larger family, if maybe you're looking at powering things like hot plates, uh, space heaters, electric blankets, some of those devices that draw a large amount of electric current, you know, anything that generates heat, then having that extra 50% more battery could be a pretty strong advantage. When you think about these from kind of a feature standpoint, beyond the weight, cost, and battery life considerations, they're fairly similar. You know, they both have that little light. Again, that's kind of a more of a path light when you're carrying this thing out from the garage or the shed back to your house so you don't trip versus something you'd want to carry around and use as a flashlight. Um, you know, inputs, very similar. Uh, the Jackery 1000 is, again, a 24-volt input, I believe. Jackery 1500 is 48-volt. Uh, what that means from a practical perspective is you need a different set of adapters, which is kind of a bummer if you already have one of the previous Jackery units. If you don't, maybe you don't care. I think standard solar panels are generally a 24 volt output. So it's fairly easy to take kind of any old solar panel that you have lying around or that you've acquired from Amazon, hook it up to the 1000, particularly with this Anderson power pole input, which is a, a relatively standard input, which is kind of nice. Uh, the benefit you get with the 48 volt inputs of the Jackery 1500, again, you get that faster charge. You get the ability to use two of these adapters. Uh, you know, one, this uh, male plug on the end plugs into the 1500. There's two of those inputs and you've got two inputs here for Jackery Solar Saga uh, solar panels. So you can get four panels on this guy. Um, you know, again, electrical math gets a little funny, but 
essentially you can charge twice as fast as, uh, as this guy. You know, again, maybe if you're thinking through a scenario where you might be without power for 10, 15 plus days, something where you can maximize your input from the sun might make a little more sense for you. Um, in terms of outputs, again, very similar. We have the three AC outputs on each one. Jackery 1500 gives you a little bit higher peak power rating. Uh, if you're gonna use high draw devices, that might be something to think about. I've actually never tripped the breaker in the Jackery 1000. I haven't gone out of my way to do it, but you know, I've run things like a, a, an espresso maker that has boilers and draws quite a bit of energy to heat up and then run the grinder and all that stuff and haven't managed to, uh, to trip this guy yet. But you know, that's the only thing I've had plugged in. So that might be a consideration for you. In terms of other inputs, you know, I think the, the kind of big failing on the Jackery 1500, and this is a pre-production unit, so this may change as we, uh, as we go on, but you have one USB-C output. I think the world's kind of moving to USB-C. It's, uh, it's you know, all the new phones, laptops, tablets, all those sorts of devices have USB-C. So one output is kind of a failing from my perspective. You, know, you can plug a USB-C adapter into your AC outlets. The negatives are you'll lose an AC outlet and you also lose some efficiency since you're taking DC power from the battery, you're converting it to AC via the inverter, converting it back to DC via whatever device you plug in here and you're losing a, a reasonable amount of electricity in terms of heat. You know, at the end of the day, you got two USB-C, two standard USB USBs, that was a mouthful, versus one USB-C and two standard USB-Cs. The big pro to the display on the Jackery 1500, other than the fact that it's color, it's nice, it's got big numbers and all that stuff, is the two timers. So you've got a timer when you've got this plugged in that estimates how long it's going to take to get a full charge, and you've got a timer that estimates how long until your battery runs down. Now you can kind of get an idea with the Jackery 1000 after you've used it a few times. You know, you get to the point where you plug it in at 50% power and you'll kind of know, you know, this will take about three and a half, four hours to charge. You can kind of tell, it'll tell you how much wattage the devices that you have plugged in are using. So, you know, if you're pulling 100 watts, you'll know that the battery's going to run down faster and you're going to have less runtime than if you've, you know, got a couple phones in there and you're pulling four watts. But the Jackery 1500 does have the intelligence to tell you, you know, based on what you're pulling right now, you have 10 hours of battery left, 40 hours of battery left. If you have a very light draw, it'll tell you there's 99 hours left. You can see I just turned on the inverter, which draws a small amount of power, and it's telling me that I have 99 hours of output left. So kind of a cool feature. So which would I buy? Again, for my use, which is going to be having this for the once every five years, you know, generally day power outage that we get around these parts um, and probably using it more for a camping trip, for Boy Scouts, you know, having this in, in kind of a car camping scenario where we might have our family, we might have a couple friends, people want to charge their devices. Uh, we do a fair amount of kind of bicycle base camping. So we'll go somewhere, set up a tent and then do multiple bike rides out of that same location. You know, a device like this is awesome for being able to charge your phones at the end of the day, being able to charge all your rechargeable bike lights, bike computers, you know, the, the half dozen little devices that have USB plugs, everything from our headlamps that we use for camping to our tail lights on our bikes. You know, this guy will charge them all up with, uh, with energy to spare for a weekend. Uh, we'll often bring a solar panel along just because it's cool and that'll keep us topped up. Um, you can also bring your espresso maker if you want to get a little uh, little cute and have that running from uh, from your tent, which is is kind of amusing. You know, for me, if I was buying this with my own money, the fifteen hundred, just the weight, the uh, the bulk, the size of it, uh, and we probably don't really need that extra runtime. That would kind of steer me away. Uh, if I was in more of a situation where we lost power frequently and, you know, maybe we live somewhere where there was snow or weather that would, would kind of come in a little bit uh, unannounced, having that ability to charge faster, uh, absorb more solar power would, uh, would probably be worth the cost. So hope you enjoyed this review. Hopefully that helped you narrow down your decision. These are both great units. They make camping a lot more fun, um, you know, and before any of you think I'm soft, Still like to do my backpacking and go out in the woods with a whole lot of nothing and schlep all my gear across 70 miles of trails. But there's also something to be said for rolling into a campground, 
having your espresso maker, cooking up some fancy dinners, you know, charging your devices at night, all that stuff. And these units are great for that. You know, they obviously get uh, well regarded for the overland crew that's using these in a vehicle and you know, going out to the middle of nowhere and needing some power. They're also great to just have in your house, you know, versus a gas generator. This thing's not gonna need oil, it's not gonna need air filters, it's not gonna need maintenance. Basically plug it in once every six, seven months, make sure you got a charge in there, you're ready to go if something bad happens and you've got some solar backup if it's something that's happening for a long time, which knock on wood, hopefully we're not gonna encounter anytime soon. But hope this helped you make an informed decision. Thanks for watching, I'm the Big Heavy. Hit the buttons somewhere that do wonderful things and be well.